Welcome back to Wrestling with Steve. And there was actually some good moments in there this week, so don't worry. It's not going to be only complaining about how bad it is. Even though there was a lot of bad, there's a lot of quick stuff, but there was some good stuff in there. You know, I mean, there was actually some really, really high moments. I have good things to say this time, so do not be alarmed. I am not on any of it. Except for a good cup of coffee. But it was a good week of Raw. Started out, you know, had Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar doing their way in. Cowboy Brock. You know, looking like he was straight off the ranch, like straight, straight, cowboy hat and all. It was a different look, but he definitely pulls it off. So good on Brock for that one. You know, and again, it, it was a way in. I mean, it went pretty much exactly how you expected it to. And the scale actually worked. No offense to the guys at AEW when they did theirs. So it was a good, like, one. Because it wasn't as dumb as it could have been. Everything worked. So can't really complain about that. And I'm still contemplating on who I think is going to come out of it on top. On Saturday at the Rumble, but I think it's going to be a good match. Um, we've been waiting for it forever, so I want to see how it's actually gonna, you know, work out and go with everything going forward. Because yeah, everyone was talking about yeah, you know, wanting it to be a WrestleMania match for forever, and now while well, we get it at the Rumble, you never know we can see it again at Mania. We don't know, but we've been waiting for it forever at the clash of the Titans and Bobby's finally in the character for it to happen and happen well and right. So I'm glad to see that. I just, I don't know. Still gonna have to think on that for, you know, another day or so and then let everyone know, but I don't know. I just think it's going to, I think it's finally going to be a good one regardless. Uh, So we'll see. I hope it's going to be a good one. We all hope it's going to be a good one. So We'll know come Saturday, but I'll let everyone know what I feel hopefully before Saturday. Bianca Belair defeated Queen Zelina in a pretty quick one. Uh, Kevin Owens defeated Damian Priest by disqualification when he snapped and won break the five count again. And I did notice that KO so over and loved. He always has been. You know, Priest was getting a lot more booze than I normally heard there. So that was, you know, good, but successful defense, even with the snap out. So I'm sure they're going to move on with that and let them have another match. Another, you know, if he snaps or, you know, he can lose the title, no disqualification, whatever it's going to be. I think no DQ between those two would be great. So we can only hope that that's what they do. I have no hope in any of them doing anything right, but that could be really good between the two of them going at it because I like the priest. And I think him and KO could really tear it down if they were given, you know, proper opportunity to do it so we just have to see what that does going forward uh ray ripley Liv morgan and dana brooke defeated nikki ash tamina and carmel in a quick one i mean it was really quick really the big getaway that i got from a lot of people was Mella looked great in that white outfit and i've said that before so good on her for that uh Rhea gets the win and then nikki blindsides her from behind scoots out before they could do anything so i'm sure they're gonna you know lock horns at the rumble and they'll carry, you know, on everything through the rumble. Cause we can all imagine they're going to, you know, have the usual, someone screws someone out or get someone out of there. The other one pulls the other one out. Yeah. They're going to do something to carry it on. Cause it's not just going to die there. Um, I want to see what they're going to do with Nikki though, with all of that, are they going to super villain it? Yeah. Almost a super villain kind of thing going on. Or is she going to go back to old Nikki? Yeah, Nikki Cross, the crazy one, like all that stuff, but we don't know. Um, but it's not going to be over at the Rumble. Like, that's not going to be the end of it. And we all know that. So we'll see what they do with it. Uh, Alpha Academy and RK Bro, the whole thing, the spelling bee, Gable losing for his team, real out there spelling big words. Yeah, you know, I mean, it had some entertainment value. I don't think it's as good as the Viking Raiders. And the Street Profits, when they were doing basketball tournaments, you know, all kinds of stuff, axe throwing. I don't think it's going to be, you know, that good, but we'll see. And as Randy defeated Gable afterwards, uh, there's going to be a scooter race next week. So, you know, Otis is in it, so we'll just see what happens with that. I think it's just going to be a bunch of ridiculousness, but that's just me. Uh, The Alexa Bliss stuff. I don't know, but they trademarked the goddess, so there's that. So she could be going back to that, and they could be pulling the plug finally and saying that 
that whole thing she did and transformed into with the fiend is officially coming to an end. And well, we are all pretty much everyone was a fan of the goddess. So yeah, I'd be okay with her going back to that because this therapy stuff just, I don't know. I don't know. It was getting weird towards the end that she took her break. And now this, uh, you know, theory is behind it could be, you know, like she goes in as this side of her in the rumble and then re-enters as the goddess type thing. You know, I don't know. I'm sure they won't do that, but that I mean, could do some kind of way to have it happen. Uh, or they're going to merge them. I don't know what they're going to do, but we could see them merging it all together. Like they are good at that stuff. They do like, and I say good, I don't mean they're like great at it. I mean, they like to do it. So, uh, yeah, three faces of Foley thing. I think he entered the Royal Rumble three times one year, three different characters. So we'll see what they're going to do with it. But yeah, that whole therapy stuff and all that, I, just, I don't have anything for it, which is why I talked about other things and not that because that was just, it's all been weird. Uh, they let us know that Veer is still coming to Raw. In case you didn't know, we've only been telling us for like the last three years, it feels like. Hey, look, there it goes back out that Veer is coming to Raw. I'd like to know when he's coming to Raw because, well, they've been telling us he was going to come to Raw for, you know, a thousand years, it feels. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I got, I got nothing on that whole thing. I just hope that they actually at least let him debut. And when they do, they don't just dump him three seconds later. Um, just because they drug it out so long. It's just got one of those feelings. I mean, look how long Emelina lasted. Or Liv doing that whole thing with Lana. I mean, that lasted about three seconds and it was over. Um, yeah, so... I don't know what they're going to do with it all, but can we please just have them debut? Cause I'm tired of seeing it. Uh, thank God. AJ Styles defeated Austin theory and there's more theory and Vince stuff, but yeah, it is what it is. I suppose gets Vince some TV time, which I guess works. I don't know. Uh, the Mysterios defeat the street profits race steals one. And really the biggest thing from all of it I got was how ridiculous all of the, uh, you know, everyone coming down between the dirty dogs and all of them just throwing one another out of, you know, the ring over the top rope, like the rumble. Like, I just thought that was stupid and silly and it just drug out the stupid even longer than it had to be. Uh, you know, that's just me though. My opinion, I just thought it was stupid and the way it was a filler really for an extra couple minutes there, but it wasn't as stupid is what happened to close the show. You know, that Ms. and Marie's birthday stuff, we all knew that, you know, Edge and them were going to... Edge and Beth were going to get involved. They destroyed everything. Like, we all saw it come there, flinging security around. Security. Put some air quotes around that. Uh, I really didn't think that should close out the show. I didn't think it was worthy um, of it, but... You know, we open up with, you know, the weigh-in, which I thought was worth more time than Maurice's birthday stuff. Because they've really, I mean, like, what have they really accomplished during all of it? I mean, they did, like, the renewal of the vows, which was, you know, dumb and a waste of a segment. They did the Maurice's birthday thing now, which I found to be dumb and a waste of a segment. Uh, so... I hope the match lives up to it. I'm not sure it's going to be over after that. I mean, it could be. And we saw rumors of Edge and AJ Styles. I think Dan posted it, which I say make it. And they could even try to, you know, spin the, you know, Edge's spear in the rumble when he came back to AJ or AJ over. I mean, he did. He oversold it. Landed wrong, hurt his shoulder. But they could try to spin that into it, which really wouldn't, you know, I don't think be that bad of a thing, honestly. Uh, you know, even though it was an accident, and AJ did, you know, like I uh, over rotated. Like, so it'd be dumb for them to do it, but at least it's something they could go off of. And I think Edge and AJ, 
I think that'd be gold, like gold, gold. I think that's like just print the money because everyone's going to want to see it. Everyone's going to want to watch it. It's a great way to sell, you know, tickets and get everyone in there. Like that's going to be, that could be like, no pun intended, phenomenal and do really, really good business for them. And with the two of them, we know it's going to tell a good story. Cause you know, edge, he tells good stories. AJ tells good stories and puts on good matches, you know, and all that with to tell the stories. Like they both have that ability. And I mean, if that's going to be the way for it to go, I mean, that's the way for it to go. Do I hope that means it's the end for like edge? No, I don't want to see him go out this last match with AJ like Taker did, but man, that could be really, really good. If they like put those two together and do it like that is a license to print money. And that would be, extremely extremely entertaining and i'll even say very worthy of a wrestlemania match very worthy like those two could tear the house down at wrestlemania yeah the big two night spectacular whatever the hell they're calling yeah, the thing you know i don't really care what they want to call it. it's going to be wrestlemania and at least with two nights even though it takes up two nights of our lives at least it's not like the one they did out in uh at the 49ers stadium to open up the stadium as the first big thing where between the pre-show and all I mean, that thing was going for like nine hours. Like that was long and I feel bad for them. And I wasn't even the one having to talk through it all. Like that was a lot. So breaking it up to two nights, lets more people tell stories and not just rushing a bunch of stuff in there. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully they, you know, do it better and everyone counts and we don't get like tag title matches on SmackDown and then women's qualifier matches that no one remembers except for the, you know, Mandy falling and the wardrobe malfunction, allegedly that I wasn't even paying attention for Carmella, but AJ and edge, someone please make that happen. Pretty please. Like that would be outstanding. Then to 2.0, I'd say they started out great for, you know, or the Dusty Cup, they started out good for the show. You know, MSK defeated Jack at time, but I thought it was a great match. Um, I thought they did really, really, really well with it. And that's saying something, because we've all heard how much I, you know, love Jiro, which isn't at all. Uh, it's a shame that Kushida, this is what they have him to, but I think he's more talented than this. But, I mean, it's good, and MSK gets to move on. I will say that, you know, Maybe they did before. I just noticed now it, the extra rows of seating taking being pretty much impossible to do anything outside the ring because there's nowhere to do anything. I'm not really a big fan of that. Uh, I think they should have that room back, keep it just like it was, as dumb as it looked. At least they had like ability to do all kinds of fancy, you know, special stuff outside the ring. Now there's what, three, four feet ringside? Like you really can't do anything with that, which I don't like. I think it's dumb. I think you have the talent. And the athletes to do it, let them do it. Let them do what they could do. Don't make it harder on them. Don't make it impossible for them. Just let them do it. And I think that's going to impede that, but I could be wrong. Uh, they got to an Escobar in the ring. Yeah, you know, out comes Breaker. I'll just say from the segment that clothesline over the rope looked terrible. Like Breaker, he knows he missed it. He didn't almost throw himself over. And hurt himself like Goldberg did all those years ago, but still didn't look good. Uh, Solo Sokoa defeated Boa, and you know, I thought it was a really good no disqualification fall count anywhere match. Solo gets to stay undefeated. He mentioned the bloodline, you know, in his promo, so maybe that means they're moving him up sooner than later, but they did at least throw it in there and Boa looked good. Like it was a good match. I'd be okay to see that again. Do cuts and defeats Ruju Duru Raj shocker. Uh, Persia Prada, Indy Hartwell and Kaylee Ray defeated toxic attraction. I'm still not a fan of Persia, just her in ring, her look like, Oh, I just don't like it, but she did get the pin on Gigi. So Persia and Indy, I get her finally getting their tag title match at some point down the road. I don't think they're going to win it, but they finally did at least find a way to play it off that they get it. Uh, the Gristled Young Veterans move on, try to go to the finals for a third time by defeating Andre Chase and that student Bodie Hayward. It was really, really quick. And Von Wagner 
you know, attacked from behind afterwards. And there was Robert Stone with them. So now he's with Robert Stone, which means he's on the soon to be future endeavored list. Just literally look at everyone that Robert Stone's been with, minus like Aaliyah. Aaliyah like is up on the main roster. Mercedes is gone. Like lots of them are gone. So he's on the soon to be future endeavored list, apparently. There's one to do something with him. How someone that could talk for him, I don't know, but I still don't like either of them. Uh, EO Shirai defeated Tiffany Stratton. Big takeaway, thank God, EO won, but you tell Tiffany Stratton put in the work. So, because that backhand spring clothesline into the corner looked way better this time around than it did the first time she did, but that thing was just ugly as sin. So, Good on her for working on that and getting it better. You can tell that's what she was doing when she wasn't having matches on TV after such a build. So that's a good thing. And she did look better. So there, I'm not bashing on her completely. Uh, and she was in there with EO, so it was going to be a good match regardless, but still looked way better than the first time. The whole Ollie J thing hurt my head. You can see the lip sync. You can hear the lip syncing. I wasn't impressed. Not my thing. Whatever. And Cameron Grimes defeated Tony D'Angelo. Become number one contender for a North American title to face off against Carmelo Hayes. And Pete Dunn showed back up with a cricket bat. And, you know, him and Tony D apparently isn't over. Um, sure, they'll do some loser leaves town, get the whatever, and that's how they'll get Pete onto the main roster. But, or something, because they're doing dark matches. But I'm glad to see that he's still at least there and that story is going to continue and because it's those two, we're going to continue to see it every week. So, and again, Pete Dunn working with these guys is really, really actually, I hate the phrase best for business, but it really is best for business because there's a lot of young and experienced guys, someone with a lot of experience that's still really young to work with to help teach them things and improve on things and all of that. So help them figure out storytelling and all of that, you know, so that's a good thing. Am I a fan of Tony D's character? No, but in ring, I mean, he can go. Is he the greatest? No, but he can go. And I think it'll be a good, you know, good way for, you know, him to, you know, keep building. And whether it's Dunn's last, you know, hurrah in NXT, we don't know. But Pete Dunn in the ring is a good thing. And him in the ring with young people is a good thing. So I'm all for it. Just, you know. Just don't make it stupid and start putting things back on poles because that's like some really bad, really bad Vince Russo stuff. So we'll see. Uh, and then Legato tried to jump, you know, Braun Breaker in the parking lot and Champa came to his aid. So we'll see what happens between all of that. But, you know, to see Champa again still doing stuff, the dyed beard's weird look for him. But to me, you know, but uh, if it's his last hurrah down there as well, then let it be his last hurrah and let them do something really special with it because he's meant a lot to that brand. I mean, he really is that brand. Him and Gargano, that was their baby for the longest time. So I still think him being down there and working with people is good, but if they're going to, you know, send him up to the main roster, you know, at least let him go out with style. But I think he deserves that for all the years of just amazingness that he gave to NXT before it became 2.0 and all that. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, let's say. But I don't think he's going to be sticking around much longer, sadly, which gets us to the Dynamite Beach Break in a frozen Cleveland. People actually need a beach break, which I found to just be amazing. That was called Beach Break in a place where people really could use a break at a beach because it's cold and miserable. But started out, you know, with Sammy Guevara defeating Cody Rhodes with Arn Anderson there in that undisputed TNT title ladder match. And I have to say that that was one of the better like ladder matches I've seen. That was one of the better AEW matches I've seen. I mean, they brought it. They really, really did bring it between Sammy, you know, leaping from the tiny ladder up to the big one, you know, to grab Cody in that cutter from way up there. That was beautiful. I care what you say. Like that was good. Uh, the knee connected on that GTH and you could see that thing connect, but they did it good. Sammy sent on from, you know, the ladder, you know, from up top of ladder on to Cody while he was sprawled across the ladder and the Nazi ladders exploding every three seconds. That was a good change of pace too. 
Uh, and Cody's crossroads off the ladder looked just sick. I mean, the way he landed, those two guys were out there just getting it. So it was a hell of a ladder match. Uh, great match for Cody, regardless of if he lost. Like, that was a good match. If you're going to lose, that's the kind of match you want to lose in, even though none of us understood why he won the thing in the first place for him to come in, finally defend it, and, you know, lose to the guy he got it from. That was a hell of a match. That was a great way to start it. There wasn't, you know, a lot of big stuff after that. You know, obviously, Wardlow with Sean Spears. So he kept up on the ramp and stuff from doing these normal, you know, chair attacks, defeated Elijah Dean and James Alexander. We all knew it. Uh, Santana Ortiz and Jericho defeating Danny Garcia in 2.0. We all saw that they were, you know, we all knew the normal divisive thing where they're not going to tag Jericho in. Every time he tries to tag himself in, they're going to tag themselves back into the match. Like, we all knew that was going to happen. Got to see where they go going forward because he got that Judas effect while the ref was distracted after he jumped off the apron because they weren't letting him in anyway, which helped them get the win. So, you know, the whole inner circle thing, we'll see what they do with it all going forward. But it was a good match regardless of all the idiocy. Like, that's even me saying for 2.0, we all know how I feel about them. Like, it was good. So, I can't really, you know, be the angriest about it regardless of how good, you know, it could have been. CM Punk and MJF on the mic was better than a lot of them have been, but, you know, it ended in the expected five-on-one attack on Punk. Layla Hirsch defeated Red Velvet, the handful of tights in attack after. And Red Velvet was ranked number one, so we'll see where they, you know, I don't think Layla's going to be anywhere near the one to beat Britt, even if she got the opportunity. So we did see on the mic, and it was good to see Britt, you know, actually talking, talking. I haven't done that in a while, but Layla, I mean, they're not – going to have Layla be the one to beat Britt. It's just not right. But she got the win over Red Velvet, who I never noticed was so tiny for somehow. I don't know how I missed that. But, you know, semi-quick one. And then the lights out match between Orange Cassidy and, you know, Adam Cole. Orange Cassidy won. Uh, but there was, you know, some highlights in there. I mean, and some idiocy, but Dan Housen debuted. Just randomly, there he was. Um, so now he's there, especially after the trouble that we saw people saying he was having, you know, Health and stuff is good to see him there. We all figured that people were going to get involved and coming down the ramp pretty much one at a time to attack one another and just take everyone out one at a time was, you know, expected. I mean, we all knew it was going to end in a brawl regardless, but they did it that way. So it wasn't just a giant mob. I will say, though, as we all remember this from back in the day when Orange Cassidy you know, had the steel cup. So when Cole went for the low blow, like, you know, Tony Schiavone says, now I've seen it all. I'm like, I can remember back. I'm sure a lot of you can remember back to when China was giving people low blows and dude wore the cup. Like it happened before a very long, long, long time ago during a very good era. So yeah, take that one, Schiavone seen it before i mean if this is the first time you've seen mr up oh, i've seen it all like i don't know where the hell you've been but that that did happen before someone wearing a steel cup when china was giving everyone low blows so take that one go look it up if you don't believe me but orange cassie's low blow to adam cole didn't look good at all orange's panama sunrise to cole did look good um and orange cassidy won after going off, you know, yeah, the staging through the plywood there. And you wonder, and I was sitting there, you know, like wondering why Adam Cole went through the curtain and around the way he did, but that's because, you know, if he went the other way, he probably would have fell right through the plywood. So it made sense in the end, but, and there wasn't a lot as much blood. Like I figured there was because it's AEW, they love to bleed. So then we found out Lance Archer and Cowboy is going to be a, Texas death match. So there's going to be blood there, but there wasn't a lot on this one. And I'm not complaining at all because I think they overdo it. And a lot of us think they overdo it. Doesn't have to be blood all the time. A little bit here and there, but that was actually really clean. So, you know, that match was good. Like there was a lot of, yeah. You know, started good. It ended good. You know, 2.0 had some good moments in there. Like, so it was good. There was some bad in there, but you know, there was enough good to balance it all out, I believe. So I'll take it as a, uh, at least a successful three days. There's, yeah, you know, there's, I mean, no matter what, you're going to watch something in wrestling. It's going to hurt your head. But, you know, at least this time there was a lot to, you know, balance all that out. 
And what could have been stupid wasn't egregiously stupid, minus that Ms. and Maurice's birthday thing. Like, that was probably the dumbest thing the whole time. So, like, just a waste, but who didn't see that coming? Like, we all saw it coming. It was going to suck. Like, the whole story. Like, every time it starts getting good, there's something stupid, like a birthday celebration or a wedding vow renewal. Like, it just, they always have to. It's, and hopefully he moves on to AJ because that'll be good. So that I'm going to jump off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to share it out. Like, share, comment, repeat, comment. Tell me what you think. Share it out because it helps get more, you know, eyes and ears on it. No matter how you're listening to it. It only takes a few seconds. And, you know, word of mouth is a very wonderful thing. And I do appreciate everyone that, you know, shares it out for me. So be back i want to say tomorrow but possibly saturday morning i think saturday morning because it's supposed to snow like a whopping possible inch here so i know the whole city is going to be shut down for two days so i'll have time to do it then but yeah it was a good couple days so uh and if you ever want on the show feel free message out facebook messenger comment on the thing and say we can figure out you know lines of communication to get you on here you can tell me what you think and you can join the conversation with me justin and dan but there will be a pre-show for the Rumble at some point. So make sure you look for that. I appreciate y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Let me know what you think about all this. Share it out. And hopefully the go home for SmackDown doesn't suck. And hopefully Rampage is at least decent. So we'll find all that out tomorrow. And I'll be back Saturday. So be good to each other. Share this out. Comment. Follow all the socials and I'll catch y'all on Saturday more than likely. So peace.